What's going on, everyone? Monty Williams, when he was fired by the Phoenix Suns, I think it was a bit of a surprise to everybody because he had some real success in Phoenix. I guess he kind of underachieved, I guess, a little bit in Phoenix, but I don't really believe so. Um, you know, I don't really think this year can really be held against Monty Williams because, one, you traded basically all of your talent, all of your depth, all of your defense for Kevin Durant. So the idea was not this year, but the foreseeable future, right? You, you got your kind of core guys. Now you can kind of make the moves you need in order to build that contender. Uh, you know, you have uh, Ayton, DeAndre Ayton, who he's been a headache. He's kind of been a nightmare. I will be surprised if he's on the roster next season. And it just wasn't really a perfect storm in Phoenix. But new ownership, usually what happens is they clean house. Coach is usually the one to go. So they ended up getting rid of Monty Williams. But as soon as he got fired, it was like, oh, he's going to have no problems getting a job. He's going to end up going to some contender or something like that and just really end up kind of right in the ship. Maybe he'll be able to win a championship. Well... We got the reports yesterday that he actually signed with the Detroit Pistons, which is a bit surprising because you would think with all of the contenders and stuff that are out there that he would want to go to one of those, but he did sign a six-year deal. He is young enough. Uh, this gives him a, a position to where he can kind of grow with the current roster, and I also think that the money helped, right? I mean, the guy received six years, $78.5 million with incentives that could reach a hundred million. So he is incentivized based on several factors that could reach him a hundred million dollars, which makes him the largest paid coach in NBA history. That's crazy. So it's kind of hard to say no to that kind of money, right? When you're a head coach, but also the six years gives Monty Williams more than enough time to kind of build this team, structure this team, and then kind of eat the fruit of your labor, right? And that, I think, is very valuable. The Pistons are also just a team that is just flushed with young talent uh, and have a really just great core and could be a real problem in the NBA for the foreseeable future. Detroit, in my opinion, has one of the best cores, uh, whether they keep everybody or end up trading guys for other stars. But, I mean, you obviously, you got Cade Cunningham, who is like the the, the big stud in Detroit, but you got Jaden Ivey, you ended up trading for James Wiseman, which I think was huge, uh, Jalen Duran, uh, Isaiah Stewart, right, you got guys that have potential upside, and like Killian Hayes, and RJ Hampton, um, you know, they just have a lot of really nice pieces, they also have some veteran guys that they can move off of that would be valuable to other teams, you saw a lot of people uh, trying to go after Boyan Bogdanovich, He's a guy that you could easily move uh, this this offseason or at some point next season to kind of get some more assets. Uh, they got a whole treasure trove of assets. You have Alec Burke, who, again, is another guy that teams may be interested in and may enjoy and can kind of go and find, like, who are the young guys you really like. Uh, Marvin Bagley is a guy that I think could really continue to blossom and develop. Uh, they also have the fifth pick in this year's draft. Uh, I mean, look, Detroit have enough assets if they wanted to. Like, if two stars became available, they could immediately go get those, right? I mean, they are, again, flushed with young talent. Flushed. So, you know, if just throwing this out there, not saying it will happen, but if for whatever, let's say Joel Embiid and, I don't know, Luka Doncic became available, right? Detroit literally has enough assets to go get both of those teams if they want to rebuild. Uh, or both of those players, I mean, if they want to rebuild, right? That's just how much just talent and depth and young assets and everything that they have. That they could easily go get two stars if they wanted to kind of expedite this at some point. I'm um, not saying that they will or that they should, but it's just something that they could do now if they wanted to with a guy like Monty Williams. So Detroit is in a great position for the future and the fact that Monty Williams is now there for six years that again gives him three to four years to kind of really round out figure out what is this roster what direction are we going you know do we end up do you know do I can I make Cade Cunningham and Jaden Ivey work or should we trade maybe Ivey 
uh, like, you know, figure out all the ins and outs of the Detroit Pistons roster. And then once they do figure it out and they are ready to contend and have success, um, Monty Williams can, you know, benefit from that and actually enjoy that. But I don't know. It'll be interesting. This is going to be a real test, in my opinion, for Monty Williams because he doesn't have a team of Devin Booker, Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton, uh, you know, and, you know, Mikel Bridges and all this just young quality blue chip talent, right? Like, Cade Cunningham has been nice, but there have also been a lot of questions about him. Um, James Wiseman, ton of questions. Jaden Ivey has been solid, but again, he we'll see how does he look this year. Um, you know, you got a lot of questions about Killian Hayes and RJ Hampton. Uh, Jalen Duran uh, has been solid, but he's so young. Like, how will he be this year? Uh, Marvin Bagley, right? He's been he's been solid, but again, what will he develop into? Because you're going to need at least one or two of these guys to turn into real stars, right? Can can Cade Cunningham turn into top fifteen, top twenty player? Jaden Ivey do the same thing, and Jalen Duran. Like, I'm not saying that they have to. Like they need one or two top five guys, but can they get, can they, do they have at least three or four guys on the roster that could be top 20 in the next three to four years? You know, maybe possibly, you know, who knows who they're going to draft, right? Who does somebody fall to them? Um, you know, if not, they, you have, you have the Thompson twins that could be a real viable option at, at the fifth seed or at the fifth pick. So they're going to have, this this cycle of young talent that they're going to need to grow and develop and kind of figure out, but they're also going to have to pay those guys. So they need to kind of figure that out fast. We're going to get to see how good of a coach Monty Williams really is. Um, you know, is he a product of the roster he had in Phoenix or was he kind of like another piece that made that successful? Um, you know, I, I don't have doubts that he's a player coach. I don't have doubts that players like him. I don't have doubts that he's a good coach, but is he a great coach? Because a lot of people think he is a great coach. Going to find out what happens with the Detroit Pistons. Now, obviously, he's not going to go there and they're going to be a contender this year. Uh, and, you know, they might not even make the playoffs for a couple years, and that's fine. But you need to start, do you start seeing real improvement? Do you start seeing real change? Do you start seeing real, like, okay, like the, the, the promise that this roster and this team could have? Is that something that you start seeing and develop, right? And then once they do get to that point, is he able to lead them to the to the actual title in the promised land? Again, these are all questions that Monty Williams is going to have to answer, right? Because I mean, he's been to the NBA Finals, but there's lots of coaches that have that haven't really done anything. There have been ch- coaches that have won NBA championships. A lot of them have been fired recently uh, that, you know, just haven't really done much else, right? And they have question marks. Um, and and have underperformed and underachieved at times. So what does what does this do for Monty Williams? He's now the highest paid coach in NBA history. He, so with that comes expectations. With that comes pressure. With that comes the need and ability to have to deliver. And if he doesn't, then Detroit looks really bad. He looks really bad. Um, you know, he kind of just set the market for some of these coaches. So you know. He's got to he's got to really show like yeah I I'm worth that money, um and that's what a lot of the incentives and stuff that he needs to hit and reach are so it'll be it'll be a, it'll be definitely an interesting uh, roller coaster here for Detroit but I really like their young talent I really like their roster I think that Monty Williams is going to get a fair chance and a fair opportunity and I think he has a lot of really good young talent a lot of good young promise that could develop into a real powerhouse. I mean, this this is one of those like handful of teams that I think is just prime and ready for a big jump into maybe being a top 3 to 5 team in the league in the next, you know, 3 to 5 years. You know, teams like Detroit, Orlando, OKC, we'll see what Victor Wembanyama becomes if Victor Wembanyama becomes the guy that he's supposed to be, then maybe the Spurs, right? You got like a handful of teams that they just have just just strapped with a ton of young, really quality talent. And uh, Detroit's got a lot of that. So we'll see. Let's see what Monty Williams can do. But anyway, 
As always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Do you love the hiring? Do you not? Uh, do you think he's a good coach? Do you think he's not? Um, were you shocked that he was fired by the Suns? Yes or no? Uh, do you think that he's the guy that can get Detroit back to winning and put them in a position to start winning championships again? Um, do you think no? How do you feel? Whatever your thoughts are, love to hear it. Let me know.